David here with Figboot on Pens, back again with another video. About five years ago, I did a video all about Grail pens, and I thought it was about time to update my list. A lot has changed over the last five years. Now, when it comes to fountain pens, the term grail pen can mean a number of things. It mainly refers to something which is difficult to obtain. And the reasons for the difficulty can be a few things. It can be scarcity. Maybe it's a limited edition pen which was long since sold out. Maybe it's something which is only produced occasionally and in small batches. Maybe it's something which is readily available but is rather expensive. Now, price is subjective, so what you might consider to be expensive might be different than someone else's opinion, and there is nothing wrong with that. One of the things I enjoy about this hobby is that it can be accessible to folks at all price ranges. Uh, but maybe you have a pen in mind that you need to save a while to afford, and in that case, it was certainly difficult for you to obtain. In looking back at my video from five years ago, I actually mentioned one pen as being a grail of mine, but I felt it was too expensive. Uh, well, not that it was too expensive, but the price they are asking for was one that I was not willing to pay. And lo and behold, that pen has eventually found its way into my collection. I'll discuss how it came into the fold here in a bit. You just might be seeing the pen on the list. Speaking of the list, while I will show you many individual pens, the spot on the actual top 10 are mainly categories or brands. Um, I felt that was a good way to group some things together. It was a challenge to limit this down to a top 10, so I expanded it to be a top 11. 11 is my favorite number anyways, so I didn't have too much of an issue with that. I'm not going to discuss too much about price. When it comes to high-end pens, the prices can vary greatly depending on the pen, but every pen I show you today uh, can be easily researched, except for a couple of discontinued ones, which uh, might be a bit tougher to find information on. Okay, enough talk. Let's take a look at some Grail pens, and in order to do so, please join me over here at camera two. To begin with, I do have a couple of honorable mentions. It was very tough to leave these off the list. To lead things off, we have a pen from a company which actually stopped producing pens for a few years, but to the excitement of the community, they recently began production again. That company would be Conid, and the one I have in my collection is the Bulk Filler King Size. Uh, the build quality and precision manufacturing on this pen is outstanding. Uh, the pen is heavy enough to feel substantive in the hand, but not so heavy that it feels burdensome. Um, it utilizes a bulk filling system, and it has a very large ink capacity. As you can see, it's inked right now. Um, I equipped this one with a, a, a very nice gold Bach number no. 8 nib, which is very wet and juicy, and one of the fair, my favorite nibs in my collection. Next on the honorable mention list is a pen made by a gentleman out of Brooklyn, New York, and that would be the Pen 18111 Night Sky Sakura. Uh, Yoshi Nakama is his name, and he creates beautiful pens where he inlays resin with resin. What I mean by that is each of these individual flowers, as well as this golden moon, are laser etched into the pen, kind of like a, a cavity, and then filled with a pearlescent powder and resin mixture. Uh, this way, the flowers are made from a material just as strong and durable as the rest of the pen. They're not going to wear off or chip off, which could potentially happen uh, if these were simply painted on the barrel. Uh, we have this unbelievable cast bronze roll stop. Uh, it's the branch of a cherry blossom tree wrapping around the cap. And the flowers and golden moon just look great uh, against the night sky of this deep blue acrylic. Um, I like this pen so much that I purchased another one in pink. Uh, this one looks great as well, and I think that the two together make for a very nice pair. And I really enjoy Yoshi's pens from Pen 18111. Okay, final honorable mention. Uh, this was a pen which was on my Grail pen list five years ago, and it was tough to leave it off completely, so I'm including it here. And that would be the Danny Trio Genkai. 
Now, the full name of this pen is the Danny Trio Tami Nuri on Shu on Genkai, uh, but that name doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue. Uh, Tamanuri is the Arushi technique used on this pen. Uh, Shu is the type of Arushi used. And then Genkai is the model of this pen. Uh, this pen is a beast. You can see it just barely fits in the frame. Uh, it's currently the largest pen in my collection. And it has one of my favorite nibs. Uh, it's very wet and I just love this stamping. I think it looks amazing. Uh, Danny Trio has another nib stamping of a fireball, and if I ever get another one of their pens, uh, I'd like to get one with that nib stamping as well. I think it looks great. Uh, if I had to rank my pens in regards to just nib stamping, this one would be uh, definitely top three, if not number one. I just think it looks fantastic, and it looks fantastic, and the pen performs very, very well in addition to that. Okay. On to the official list. Uh, and these are not in any particular order. And as I mentioned up top, each spot is a category except for one. So I'll get that one out of the way first. And that would be the Classic Pens LB5. Uh, this is a pen which has legendary status in the pen world. Um, I have two of these. Uh, this one here is called Tensui, which is Japanese for raindrops. Uh, and this color is called Space Blue. Um, I know it's a real deep blue, so on camera it, uh, it comes across really dark, but it is indeed a, a deep blue here. Uh, and then this one here is called Kuseki, which translates to metal ore. And this material is called Diamond Brown. The main difference between these two models are the color of the material, uh, as well as the trim and nib. Uh, everything on the Tensui is rhodium plated and the Koseki has a gold plated trim. Uh, these were made in conjunction with Sailor and had a lot of Sailor hardware, uh, as well as a Sailor King of Pen nib. Uh, the LB5 is slightly larger than a Sailor King of Pen. Now, what makes the LB5 so special in the minds of so many? Uh, there are a few main reasons, but if you want more detail, I would suggest checking out my full review on these pens. Uh, the material is described as a diffusion bonded acrylic. Uh, the layers of acrylic are bonded on a molecular level. Um, it costs around 10 times uh, more than standard acrylic. I, in fact, recently someone in the community came into possession of a number of these spare rods left over from classic pens, uh, and folks were offering in excess of $1,000 just for a pen blank. Uh, that's rather excessive in my opinion, but if someone is willing to pay that much for a blank, then I guess I can't call it excessive. Um, these pens were a very limited edition of only 50 units of each of these seven colors. Um, I have the red material in a, uh, a different model. Uh, here it is with the LM1. Uh, this material is just amazing. Uh, and these pens have long since been sold out. The only place that you could find them is on the secondary market. Uh, there was one listed up on eBay for quite some time with an asking price of around $12,000. I don't believe the pen sold for that amount and the listing was eventually removed. Uh, in my opinion, $12,000 is way too much for this a pen. Uh, however, it is one of the few pens in my collection which have increased in value, which is rare in this hobby. Uh, if I was ever to put up one of these for sale, you know, the price might be around five or $6,000, which I feel is more around the true value of one of these stunning pens. But at this time, I'm not looking to part ways with either of these. Next up on the list would be something from Namiki. Uh, Namiki is the luxury division of Pilot and they make some incredible Arushi and Mackier pens. Um, I'm fortunate to have a couple here. Uh, in regard to Arushi, we have this beast that is the Emperor. Um, I had this pen at work with me the other day and had a coworker need to write something down. So I uh, gave this to him to use uh, with the caution to please be careful that it was a very nice pen. And he kind of looked at it and said, oh, it's just a big plain red pen. What's so special about it? So I needed to go into a two minute explanation to him as to why this pen is so much more than just a quote unquote big plain red pen. 
Um, of all of the nibs in my collection, this enormous number 50 size Emperor is one of my favorites. Uh, while it's huge in size, uh, it's surprisingly easy to write with. Um, you know, it's very one of my very few pens that I keep uh, inked up at all times. Uh, I just love this pen. Uh, then we have the uh, Emperor's smaller brother, which is the Yukari Royale. Uh, the, this pen is made from metal and this one is made from ebonite. Uh, the nib on this pen is a bit smaller, but still very outstanding. Um, I think they look nice sitting next to each other here. Um, I mentioned that N uh, Namiki does a lot of great Mackie work as well. Um, I have do have two pens from their Nippon Art series. Um, first up, there is the Mount Fuji and Waves. Uh, this reminds me a lot of one of my favorite paintings, the Great Wave off Kanagawa. Uh, and then we have uh, this model here, which is called the Golden Pheasant. Um, I've reviewed the Mount Fuji pen, but the uh, Pheasant is one from my personal collection I have yet to review. Uh, let me know in the comments if you'd like to uh, see a more of this beauty here. Uh, but I think all uh, of those pens look fantastic, and anything from Namiki uh, is worthy to be called a grail pen. Coming in randomly at number nine is just about anything from the Italian brand Omas. While the brand has recently been revived, I'm mainly talking here about the original incarnation of the company. Um, I do have a couple here. My first was this model right here called the Ojiva Cocktail Blue Angel. Um, I believe I picked this one up not long before Omas closed up shop. I think the pen has some really sleek lines. And I like this ridged resin as well. Uh, and then after that, I picked up this My Lord Arco. Uh, this was my very first Arco celluloid pen, and I looked for an Arco pen for a very long time. For a long time, this was my grail pen. Uh, and I just really love this layered look. Uh, and then my most recent acquisition is this Turquoise 360 model. Um, I go into more detail in my review of this pen, uh, but it's something I had wanted for a very long time and I was able to pick up at the annual auction which takes place at the Triangle Pen Show. Um, I really love the unique triangular look of this pen. Uh, and it, then in this translucent resin, you get a really good look at what's going on inside the pen. And then the Omas nibs are just outstanding. They were one of the few companies who manufactured their nibs uh, in-house. Next up, I have only one pen in my collection which falls under this category, and that would be something with eggshell. Uh, when done right, I found that the eggshell treatment on pens looked really beautiful and unique. This particular model here is from the brand Mr. Cypress based out of Taiwan. Um, I just really love the application of the treatment here with a denser portion on the cap and then the shells falling away as the barrel progresses. Um, I prefer this design rather than having shells consistently solid across the entire pen. Um, eggs from quails as well as ducks are commonly used. Uh, I believe duck eggs were used for this specific pen. Um, I thought that robin's eggs would look really gorgeous on a pen, but after some research, I discovered that robins are a protected species and the use of their eggs are, is illegal in the U.S. So using their eggs, while it would look fantastic, would legally be a very bad idea. Um, I actually have another eggshell pen in the mail right now heading my way. Uh, that one also incorporates Raiden into the design. Um, it's coming from a manufacturer out of India, and the price is actually very reasonable. I'm looking forward to getting a closer look at it, and I'll be letting you know if it lived up to my expectations in an upcoming review. But I just love the looks of these eggshell pens. And I actually like some of the discoloration on the shells as well. It gives you a, a reminder that this is a natural material uh, and was once something else. And just think it looks really, really cool. I'll show you what the uh, section looks like on this one. I put the gold nib on this, but then it has some like Raiden flakes on the section. So I thought that overall, uh, this was a really unique and cool design. And there's lots of different eggshell options out there on the market from different manufacturers. At number seven on my list would be something special from Visconti. 
Uh, there is a wide variety of their models I would categorize as grail pens. So I thought I would share a few of them. Uh, to begin with, we have the Blue Ripple. Um, I had my eye on this pen for a very long time and had to do a quite a, a bit of patient searching over a couple of years before I found one for a price I was willing to pay. Um, I really love the underlying white kind of ice resin and this uh, dark deep blue silver overlay uh, is supposed to represent the expanding ripples of water after dropping, dropping something in it. Um, it writes fantastically as well. Uh, this is one of my favorite Viscontis in my collection. I like this dual tone nib. Uh, and this one is a, a, an 18K gold nib and writes fantastic. Uh, in regard to others though, um, you know, I have a number of unique models. Uh, this one here is called the Millionaire, uh, and it is a pen actually made from marble. Uh, the marble must be rather thin because the pen is not overly heavy. Uh, the nib on this specific Visconti is probably my favorite nib of any Visconti in my collection. It is just outstanding. Uh, then we have the Divina. Um, I am very fond of this material. Uh, it's called Desert Springs. I have it in opera as well, but I just love the details in this unique resin. Uh, and then this is a more traditional uh, uh, Davina model that has the uh, sterling silver twisting bands as well. Uh, then we have a pen that's called the Wall Street, which is made from a stacked celluloid. Uh, the material really reminds me of some of uh, some of the material used in vintage Parker 51s. Um, I like how it gives you a different look depending on the angle. Uh, and then here's a pen that is called the Opera Crystal Dark Midnight. Um, I really like the contrast here between the transparent resin and the stark black hardware. Um, this pen utilizes uh, vis what Visconti calls their uh, a power filling system, which is a vacuum filling system. Um, it has a large barrel, and this looks fantastic uh, with ink sloshing around in here. And finally, here is the classic Homo sapiens. This pen is made from a mix of volcanic lava and resin. Over the years, the material can develop a unique personality. I've seen some which are more shiny, some which are more matte, like this one here. Uh, some are a bit more gray, and on others, the pitting in here is a bit more prominent. Uh, the pitting isn't too prominent on this particular model. Uh, you might have noticed something uh, unique about this specific pen, and that is this second set of bands on the barrel. Uh, this is an older sterling silver model, long since sold out, and these had that extra set of bands. I, I like that it's unique, and I wouldn't mind seeing Visconti bring back that second set of bands on an occasional one of their models. So, as you can see here, when it comes to grail pens, Visconti has a large variety of pens which might meet your needs. Coming in at number six, we have a company with ties to another manufacturer, and that would be Nakaya. Um, I have two of them here. Uh, this one here is the Dorsal Fin 2, and this is the Decapod Twist. Um, if you are not familiar, Nakaya has ties to the Japanese brand Platinum. It's my understanding that some of the artisans who retire from Platinum now work for Nakaya and kind of work under different production guidelines. Uh, they kind of, it's like a semi-retirement where they produce what they want, when they want, as opposed to meeting certain quantity requirements. And they make some of the most amazing Arushi pens out on the market. Uh, you often need to get on a wait list in order to purchase one of these pens. Uh, in the case of both of these pens, I had to wait several months. Uh, in the case of one of these, I'm not sure which it was. I was originally told it would be a year wait, but then it arrived in around four months. So the provided times might vary. Both of these pens have the Akatomernary finish, which I love. With the Dorsal Fin 2, it is called the 2 because it has both fins on the cap as well as the barrel. Uh, there is an original Dorsal Fin model with a fin only on the cap. Uh, the distinctive element of these pens are those fins. Uh, the fin is actually made up of built-up Arushi lacquer painstakingly sculpted over months. There was some discussion in the community whether these fins were actually 
in fact built up Arushi or if instead they were part of the sculpted ebonite base material. Someone actually x-rayed these pins and as you can see here, the fins are indeed built up lacquer. Uh, the pin on top is an original dorsal fin and the one on the bottom is the dorsal fin too. I was very happy to see the pens were exactly as the company had represented. Um, I just love the distinct look and shape of this pen. There's nothing else like it in my collection. Uh, and then we have here, we have the Decapod Twist. You know, let me just show you what the nib looks like on this one as well. Uh, it is a little on the gold side and uh, it is uh, pretty much a standard platinum nib, a platinum gold nib, let's say. Uh, and then here is the Decapod Twist. In hindsight, I think this pen would have looked better if I had left off the clip. Uh, at the time, I really wasn't into clipless pens, but uh, now I better appreciate that some pens are more aesthetically pleasing without the clip, this being one of them. Uh, I still love it though. Uh, and this is what it looks like. You can see with that. Uh, I mean, it is an Akaya branded nib, but essentially they are uh, manufactured by platinum. So it's essentially a platinum nib as well. Uh, and I just love this pen. It just thinks it looks unique and very cool. Well, except for you want to make sure that I get it lined up. There we go. Lined up like that. Okay, six down, five to go. More than halfway home. Uh, next up would be a pen from Mont Blanc. Now, Mont Blanc has the classic 146 um, as well as their flagship 149. Um, there's also the Star Walker. Uh, here is a standard Star Walker, and then here is one in uh, Ultra Black, which I really enjoyed that I picked up recently. I kind of like that floating star here at the top. Um, but the pens of theirs that I have included on this list uh, aren't any of these. It is what is part of their Great Characters or Writers series. Now, I've reviewed a number of pens uh, in this series previously. There was the uh, Enzo Ferrari, the Walt Disney, uh, Marilyn Monroe, and the James Dean. Uh, there are many out there. And the one in my collection is the Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, Mont Blanc does a great job of implementing a theme into a pen and relating it to the well-known person used as an inspiration for that particular model. Uh, lots of symbolism, which I love. I am a big film buff and a fan of Hitchcock's work. There is the grooved exterior, which harkens to the opening credit sequence from the film Vertigo. Uh, there is this knife clip in reference to Psycho. Uh, they also always do a custom nib stamping in this particular case. Uh, this one here has Hitchcock's famous profile sketch he would draw himself. Um, if you are a fan of someone Mont Blanc has featured on a pen, then that's something that would be a high, uh, something highly desirable to add to your collection. Um, I actually have one from their writers series I'll be reviewing soon, which is the Brothers Grimm. Now, I haven't yet begun researching this pen yet, so I'm not certain what all the symbolism is, but all will be explained during the review. So look for that sometime in the new future. Now, with this Hitchcock, uh, in my previous Grail pen video, I mentioned how expensive this pen was, and while the pens were available to purchase, I really wasn't willing to pay the exaggerated price. Well, I happened to have a friend who purchased one of these from an overseas retailer, and they happened to want, have one very last one uh, for the very same price. Uh, while the price was the most I had ever spent on a pen, it was far below what others were being offered for. And it was a legitimate retailer. So I figured that if I was ever going to add this to my collection, then that was the time to do so. Chances are, uh, were, are were that I would never see a new unused pen for that price. So I took it and I have not regretted the decision. For number four, I have two Arushi pens from Pilot, and that would be the Custom 845 and the Custom Arushi. Um, one thing about these two pens is that they don't necessarily look that special. An outsider might think these, think these were just simple black pens. The 845 has a resin base, and the Custom Arushi is made with ebonite. Uh, both have exterior treatments of stark black Arushi. 
You won't be able to see it here on camera, but with a loop, you can just barely make out the faint brush strokes, which really reminds me that there was an artisan involved in the making of this pen. Um, I cannot say enough good things about the nibs on both of these pens. Um, a while back, I did a video about my favorite nibs, and both of these nibs made the list. Uh, they were both top five. Uh, I had the 845 at number four, and the Customer Rushi came in at number two. Uh, they are both nibs that when you write with them for the very first time, you just think to yourself, wow. Uh, they are both glorious and worthy to be called grails. At number three, we don't necessarily have a specific pen or company, but a material. It's a material you've previously seen in this video, and that would be Arco Celluloid. Um, I have it on two of my pens. Uh, here is the Omos My Lord, which I shared earlier, and then here it is on the ASC Bologna Extra Arco. Um, celluloid is more durable than the hard rubber on early fountain pens, but less durable than many modern resins and plastics. Um, it has a really nice warm feeling in the hand, but the material itself is rather unstable. It can have a tendency to discolor over time, and in addition, it can be extremely fat flammable. Uh, new material like this is not currently being manufactured, so existing blanks of high-quality celluloid are extremely valuable and very coveted by pen makers. Um, I love both looks this material provides. Uh, there is the cross section right here you can get a good look at. Uh, and then there's the more shaved top of the pen. Um, Arco pens tend to have a very high price tag, so I'm not sure if I'll ever add more to my collection, but I adore the two I have. Um, this is what a small piece of this material looks like. Um, I don't know why, but this small piece brings me a lot of joy. Um, it was gifted to me, uh, and then Brian Gray of Edison Pens was kind enough to offer to uh, polish it up for me and make it look nice. I believe his wife Andrea did the actual polishing, uh, but this little thing here is one of my prized pen possessions. I think it's something only a pen person would really understand, but I just love this little uh, square inch or roughly square inch of this material. We're getting close to the end. Only two more left. And coming in at number two, we have the Sailor King of Pen. Um, I have three in my collection, uh, but one is currently getting a makeover. Uh, this one here is the King of Pen in Royal Tangerine. Um, I really love this bright, vibrant orange resin, and the King of Pen nib is one of my favorite in my collection. Uh, so that is the uh, Royal Tangerine, and then this one here is the King of Pens Pro Gear. Uh, this model here is called Sky. Um, a few years ago, I was up in New York City and I was visiting the Fountain Pen Hospital. Um, I had really wanted one of these pens, but it drugged my feet and they were pretty much sold out everywhere. Uh, when, in the I when I went in the store, I saw that they had one with my preferred nib size and it was the last one they had in the store. So I felt it would uh, probably be my only chance to get my hands on this one. So I purchased it. Uh, this pen is very high on my list of personal favorites. Uh, I love the size. Uh, this blue translucent resin looks great. And as I mentioned, the king of pen nib is outstanding. Um, I did own a, a black model with gold trim of this pen, but I did sell it a few years back. Um, I mentioned I have another King of Pen. Uh, that one is the King of Pen Ebonite. Uh, this is what it looks like. It's very sleek. It is currently in Japan getting a makeover from Bokumandu. Um, I have wanted to get a pen done by Hiroko, and it felt like it would. this would be kind of a nice blank canvas for her to work on. I'll go into significantly more detail when the pen is returned and I make a video about it, but Mokumondo is a company that, uh, really an artisan, who will, I, for lack of a better word, bedazzle your pen with Raiden or Arushi or Eggshell. She does some spectacular work. If you're into pen eye candy, I strongly recommend following her on Instagram. Her current wait list is over a year. I have patiently waited for over a year for my turn to arrive, and I will look forward to seeing how the pen turns out. Uh, and I will certainly be sharing it with you as well. Uh, so look forward to that in the upcoming months. But the King of Pen in general is one of my absolute favorite models. Finally, we've reached the final entry on this list. 
As I mentioned up top, these were in no particular order, but the last category I have for you would be to have a custom pen made by one of the many talented artisans creating fountain pens. Uh, folks like Jonathan Brooks, Sean Newton, Ryan Cruzak, uh, one-man shops or one-woman shops uh, like Mechar Knives and Tamanuri Studios, they all do amazing work, and I have purchased pens from each of these makers. Uh, that's what's amazing, uh, is that each of these makers are willing to create just about anything you want and the process of that custom creation to fit your personal specification can be a very fun experience. Uh, just to uh, show you a few, uh, here is a beautiful Arushi creation from Tamanuri Studios. Um, I really love the blue treatment on this pen. I think it looks really, really classy. Uh, then I have two torpedo models from Macar Knives. Um, I think the dimpling on this uh, purple pen is spectacular. It's just stunning. And then the Moco TI on this slightly thicker model is fantastic as well. I, I really love this roll stop with the mother of pearl ring, which really makes this part really pop. Uh, then we have a, a Scrimshaw model from Ryan Krusak. Now, this is one of his standard models, but I've seen some of his custom work. It is very high quality, and Ryan is a very talented artist in a number of medium. Um, and here's one of my favorite Jonathan Brooks models. Uh, this is his Charleston model, and the material is called Earth Magic. Um, I love this material so much, it was the inspiration behind the material I used on my very first Leonardo project. Um, but getting something custom made from a talented artisan like these turns a pen from something special into a prized possession. Uh, and I like having prized possessions. Now I showed this in a review previously, but this is a pen from Shibui North, uh, where I had her make a custom pen to where this one was with the skulls, but I had her put uh, my Fig Boot logo on each of the skulls, or on most of the skulls. So something like this, I took a standard model and the, the maker was willing to turn it into a custom creation that was really personalized for me and it makes it even that much more special. Finally, I have one more recommendation and that would be to find your own grail pen. Uh, a grail pen is a personal choice. Uh, what is meaningful and special for me might not be meaningful and special to you. So go out there and find that special pen which is not easily obtained because when you acquire that pen, it'll mean that much more to you knowing the journey you took in order to get into it your hands. So. There was a look at 40 different pens. I hope that in at least one of the 40, you found something that you would like to make a grail of your very own. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.
Now, you might have noticed something unique about this specific pen, and that is this second set of bands on the barrel. Uh, this is 